All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Martijn de Vries. I'd like to talk to you about edge to core to cloud, making the vision a reality. All right, so in case you're not familiar with what Bright Cluster Manager is, um, Bright, Cluster Manager is Bright Cluster Manager is a tool for system administrators to turn a pile of hardware into a fully functional cluster. That can be an HPC cluster, but it can also be an OpenStack private cloud or a Kubernetes cluster, for example, for container orchestration. So what we do is we streamline the cluster deployment, uh, and after the cluster has been deployed, we manage it, we health check it, we monitor it, and we provide a complete management interface for the administrator. So we have integrations going on with OpenStack, with Kubernetes, with Ceph, and several HPC workload management systems as well, such as Slurm or PBS Pro, LSF, UGE. So the way our solution works is by having a so-called cluster management daemon running on all of the nodes inside of a cluster. And these daemons are communicating with each other in order to make the cluster manageable. Um, and we provide three interfaces to this cluster management daemon that's running on the head nodes. So first of all, you have Brightview, which is a graphical administrator interface. We have a cluster management shell, which is an administrator interface, uh, which is on the command line. So some people prefer to operate on a cluster uh, using a GUI and other people prefer a command line. And then lastly, there's also a JSON API. It's an RPC style API that you can use to interact with the cluster from a Python script or from uh, a C++ application, for example. So we provide very convenient uh, Python bindings for this API so that it's super easy to talk to the cluster using Python data types. Thank you. You can, you, you can build bright clusters on-premise, off-premise, so in the cloud, um, and also in hybrid situations. So you can have a cluster that is uh, running on-premise, which are extending into AWS or Azure. And the nice thing is that those nodes will uh, look and feel exactly the same as your local nodes do. And I'll say a little bit more about that later. And um, the main topic for today is talking about edge. So you can also have geographically distributed clusters that are spanning uh, several edge locations. So I'll say uh, more about that later. It's also very easy to repurpose nodes on the fly. So a node that is running Kubernetes right now could be running an HPC scheduler a moment later. So we make it possible to, uh, to change the, the personality of the node within seconds. And lastly, we also provide a rich collection of HPC and machine learning tools and libraries. So to make it super easy to, for users to get their workload up and running on the cluster. So about Bright and SUSE, so we've been working together for now 10 years. So this is uh, it's great to have this anniversary here. Um, currently, Bright 8.2, uh, which is the version that is uh, most recent right now, we have, really, we have announced Bright 9.0. So it's going to be available for download in the next uh, two to three weeks. Um, so Bright 8.2 and 9 support uh, these versions of SLES, so SLES 12, SP3 and 4, and we expect SP5 to be supported in Q1 of 2020. Uh, and we also support SLES 15, SP0 and SP1. So um, in Bright 9 we will also support uh, ARM for SLES, so we know that uh, SLES is uh, pretty active in the ARM community, so um, we'll be supporting that as well uh, next year. And the way that we work with SLES is we actually bundle it on the Bright ISO. So when you get Bright Cluster Manager, when you download it, you can select a SLES as the, the operating system that you want to use on your, on your cluster. And then it, uh, it embeds SLES inside of the Bright ISO. So you don't, you don't have to install the operating system separately because we take care of that for you. So you deploy your head node, uh, so we first deploy uh, SLES on there, then we deploy several HPC related packages, and after you have that done, you can start booting your compute nodes by pixie booting them off of the head node of the cluster, and we will image, the, image those nodes with SLES as well. So here's the, um, to give you an impression uh, of what, what type of clusters uh, you can build using uh, our edge capabilities, here's the, uh, the, the cluster that we have built um, for this show. So you can see that uh, we have a, uh, a head node, which is in Amsterdam. So this, this, is an, this is the core cluster. So it consists of several ARM nodes as well as several x86 nodes. So it's a mixed architecture. Uh, and then we're extending that into AWS. Uh, so the EU West facility, to be precise. So I wasn't able to make it geographically accurate. So you'll have to forgive me for that. 
<laughs> and then we have uh, several edge locations. So one in the NVIDIA labs where we have a DGX. And then over here at our booth, we have two edge locations. Uh, one which has a DGX station and another one which has a, a Jetson TX2, which is a, a little ARM board. So all of those, all of this infrastructure oper is operating as a single large cluster. So you can uh, connect to it with Brightview and with CMSH and you can manage it as if, as if it is a single cluster. Well, it actually is a single cluster. So um, about Bright Edge, so this is a feature that we introduced in Bright 8.2 um, and we're extending it further in Bright 9. So it allows you to provision, monitor and manage edge servers in thousands of locations as a single cluster from one location. So there are several benefits to this. So um, you can have a very fast and streamlined deployment of your edge location so that you don't necessarily need to have um, highly skilled personnel in each edge location. And of course you want to, if you have thousands of locations, you want to deploy all of those in exactly the same way. So you have uh, lower administrative costs, um, so you only need to manage one cluster. And by the way, Edge can also be interesting if you, are, um, if you just want to operate, let's say, five clusters, for example, and you want to uh, manage it as if it is a single cluster, as, as a single large cluster. So uh, each, of those, each of those Edge locations can have any amount of uh, compute infrastructure. So you, pr you get higher productivity because uh, you have a standardized way of deploying all of these edge locations. So you're not, you're not um, doing a one-off on, on every location. Um, and that also means that you need a minimal staff um, at each location. So pretty much the only thing that you have to do in order to deploy an edge location is put a USB stick in or load a virtual media through the BMC of a node and power it on and the rest of the procedure uh, is taken care of automatically. So here's a, a generic view of what an edge um, setup looks like. So you always have a core cluster, uh, which actually in the most minimal form may consist of just a single head node. And then you have several edge locations. Here we have A, B, and C. Um, so this is an edge location which has an edge director and also a couple of edge nodes behind it. So this is the public network, this is the private network. And over here we have an edge site which just consists of a single director. So as I said, you can, uh, you can put any, any amount of compute here. This, this could be a thousand nodes, for example. We also allow, uh, so the title of this presentation is from uh, edge to core to cloud. So the cloud portion looks like this. So we allow uh, an on-premise bright cluster to be extended into AWS and Azure very easily. So you just put in your uh, Azure AWS credentials and then bright talks on your behalf to the API. Uh, that be, the Azure AWS API and we create nodes over there and we provision those nodes in exactly the same way as your on-premise nodes are, are provisioned. So the same software image is used across on-premise as well as the cloud. So what that provides is uniformity. So the cloud nodes look and feel exactly the same way as your on-premise nodes do and that means that workload that is designed to run in your on-premise cluster will work without modifications on your, uh, on your cloud nodes as well because the workload doesn't even realize that it's running in the cloud. So the cloud director, uh, which is actually not on this picture, um, well, let's say it's over here, that acts as a head node in the cloud. So it it's, uh, holds a copy of all of the software images and it takes care of LDAP authentication for your cloud nodes. So it uh, fulfills some tasks that the head node fulfills for your on-premise cluster. Uh, so you could actually consider Edge, you could actually consider uh, cluster extension to be a special case of edge computing where the edge location happens to be in the cloud. So uh, you'll see that there's many resemblances. So, yeah. So, cloud cluster, uh, extension to the cloud involves a cloud director. Extension to an edge, direct, to an edge uh, location has edge director. So edge uh, Edge nodes are servers that are in geographically separate locations and, and one of those servers is special because it serves as an edge director. Um, so you can, you can consider it sort of as a head node for a bunch of edge nodes that sit in a particular location. It's very similar to a cloud director, so it's provisioned by uh, booting it from a, a BMC or a virtual media or local media, like a USB stick or a DVD for example and it authenticates uh, to the head node by using a shared secret. So that's how we know that we're really uh, dealing with a, uh, an edge director. 
Uh, and all communication between the edge location and the core cluster is using uh, SSL. So it's, uh, it's certificate-based authentication. And then what it does is it runs a Pixie server on a private edge network so that you can also Pixie boot other nodes inside of that uh, edge location to also make them part of the cluster. So the bandwidth, re bandwidth requirements are fairly modest. It's just uh, 50 bytes per second per node, and that's for uh, monitoring data. And also we take care that if the uh, connection to your core cluster goes away, that monitoring data is buffered. So you will not lose your monitoring data. It will just be sent when the... Um, when a core cluster comes back up. So here's the deployment. This is what the deployment procedure looks like. First, if you wanted to, uh, if you want to deploy an edge location, first you need to make sure that there's connectivity between your edge location and the core cluster. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, that uh, the edge location can reach the core cluster, and the core cluster can reach the edge location. So it needs to go both ways. Then you connect your edge director to a public network. You connect connect the uh, edge director plus the edge nodes to a private network, if you have any additional edge nodes, that is. And then you boot the edge director using uh, an ISO, either using USB or a DVD or virtual media. And then what it does is uh, it, it will load the bright node installer and that will go through a number of steps. It, it uh, will configure your BMCs if you wanted to do that. It will create file systems on your edge director. It will provision an edge director operating system from the core cluster. So that's uh, all going over your, over your network connection. And then it transfers any software images that, are, that may be necessary for booting additional edge nodes. So it holds copies of those, and we automatically keep those up to date as well, by the way. And then it transfers the slash CM share tree, which is an application tree um, for your edge nodes, basically. It's an NFS exported to your edge nodes and uh, imported on your, on your edge nodes. And then if you have edge nodes, you can actually pixie boot those off of your edge director, and they will be provisioned with a software image uh, of your choosing. So this allows you to build a single cluster that has uh, many ge that consists of many geographical le regions. So there's another topic that I wanted to talk about, um, and that is the machine learning stack that we provide for SUSE. I thought this would be interesting as well. So what we do is we provide a complete set of machine learning packages for uh, both SLES 12 as, less, as well as uh, SLES 15. So um, we we have builds of, the, of those packages both for NVIDIA as well as for Intel, uh, so by rel relying on MKL. Um, so just an example of some of the packages that we provide, uh, TensorFlow 1, or 2, 1 and 2, Horovod, CNTK, Cafe 2, etc., etc. So pretty much anything you need in order to get machine learning workload up and running on a SLES cluster is, can, can be provided by Bright. Uh, so the good news is that it's tested and validated, so we have um, automated tests that are running. Uh, for all of these frameworks so that we can val validate whether new versions that are coming out are any good. So very often uh, they are not exactly good, so you may not always want to run the latest and greatest version of machine learning frameworks. So the, one, the versions that we provide in any case are all tested. And it's very easy to install on any Bright 8.2 or 9.0 uh, slash 12 or slash, slash 15 cluster. It's just a matter of running zipper install and uh, that's it. So we also provide uh, JupyterLab notebooks, um, which are scheduled either through Slurm or Kubernetes. So you can um, provide users with, an with a web interface in order to get machine learning workload up and running. Then there's another small topic that I wanted to discuss. So this is actually uh, was announced today. We launched a program called Easy8. Uh, so Bright Cluster Manager is now free of charge for up to eight nodes. Uh, you will not get support, so it's, uh, it's community supported. <laughs> yeah, if you want support, then you have to pay for it, of course. Uh, but we actually launched a community site as well, community.brightcomputing.com, where uh, users of Bright Cluster Manager can come together and help each other out. We uh, have a presence there ourselves as well, as well obviously, so we may help out uh, if, we, uh, if we feel like it. But if you want to uh, be sure that you're going to get support, you will need to buy a support contract. Um, so you can use this for production, but it's also very helpful for evaluation. So uh, it's super easy to, to get it. You just log on to our uh, customer portal, um, click Easy8. You have to, we, we do ask that you uh, fill out your name and organization, and then uh, a product key will be emailed to you within probably 10 seconds. Then you can download an, an, uh, an ISO, and you can uh, get your cluster up and running. 
So it's available for SLES as well. So I should note that it will require a SLES license. So uh, you will not be able, to, you will not get those for free, unfortunately. And it includes almost almost all the features. So it has the edge capability, the cluster extension to the cloud, all of the machine learning packages. It's all available for free. Uh, the only thing that's not in there is OpenStack. And the reason why we do why we did not include that is because OpenStack can be. Um, more complicated than you want it to be, so we don't want people to be running that without getting a support contract from us. So in conclusion, um, you can build a single slash-based cluster uh, with nodes from ge different geographical regions. We provide a very uh, simple deployment process for those edge locations, so it does not require uh, uh, very smart people at every edge site in order to get that up and running. It eliminates the need to manage many different clusters individually or semi-individually, so using sync tools. So um, if you have five clusters that you want to manage as a single large cluster, you can consolidate those as edge locations. Um, and edge nodes are largely controlled uh, from a local edge director. And it leverages existing technology that we've had for many years uh, for, for bursting to the cloud. So this is not all new functionality that, uh, that, you're, that we're just introducing. It is uh, tried and tested. And lastly, Edge Nodes can run different workload management systems. So you can run um, uh, Slurm or PBS Pro on there, but also Kubernetes, for example, at each Edge location. So some future directions. We're working on uh, ATA capabilities for Edge Directors. So that will be coming in Q1, and it will be released as an update for Bright 9.0. Um, we'll make uh, monitoring offloadable for Edge sites so that uh, the core cluster will not be needed at all anymore to store all of that monitoring data. That brings the bandwidth requirements down even further, even though they were already pretty modest. So that will be coming in 9.1 and 9.2. And we're also working on making it possible to add uh, Edge login nodes to your cluster. So you could already do that, but you have to do a couple of things uh, manually. So thank you for attending. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, ask them now or come up to me after the show. Yes. What capabilities do you lose? Yeah. So the question is, if the head node goes down, what capabilities do you lose at the edge? Um, the only capability that you lose is the ability to uh, to manage your cluster. So you everything will keep running. So Kubernetes will keep running. Your HPC scheduler will keep running but you will not be able to uh, go to your core cluster and then decide to reboot a node, for example, in the edge location. So for that, you have to uh, wait until the, core, the connection to the core cluster comes back. How long will the edge survive with the head Yeah, the question is, how long will the uh, edge survive with the head node being down? Um, in principle, until infinity, uh, as long as you don't want to perform any management operations. And uh, the amount of monitoring data that is uh, stored is by default, I think, 72 hours. But if you want, you can increase that uh, to any time period you like. It will just occupy more memory on your edge director. All right. Again? Yeah. All right, let's give, it a, let's give uh, Martine a big hand. Thank you. Martine, let's grab a couple of numbers here.